Hello there! Hi! Today we are talking about top 3 thematical games and choices of our friends as well. But before we start talking about them, uh, we should like briefly comment how we chose uh, these games. Yeah, for me, uh, thematical uh, top was meant to be like a top that uh, the games that feel uh, the most thematical. Uh, the games where theme uh, gives me the most of that mm -hmm. right feel, feeling and feel. So it's kind of same here. So I chose the games that that where I feel being in the game choosing the uh, theme the most. Yeah, so be, being the character easy. in there and yeah. so on. And All of that. course, we chose probably I at least I chose uh, games that I really like. Not just, uh, for example, if there is a very thematical game that has immersive theme, but I don't like it, then I wouldn't choose that in my top three. Absolutely. So that's like, obvious. It's, exactly. That's so obvious I wouldn't mention. But that would be, for example, in the best artwork, it doesn't... There oh. could be, you know, some things. But, uh, okay, uh, let's go to number threes. My number three is a game uh, that I waited for a very long time and then I got it. Nine and months? Nine months, I think. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I got it and I really like this game. It's higher on my top uh, 10 of all time, but it's lower um, according to the thematical aspects. A bit lower in the, in this top three, and it's that of winter. Surprise, surprise! <laughs> yeah. Um, why it's lower? Because there are other games that uh, have a more immersive theme. Although uh, I like Dead of Winter more than any other game on my list. So um, Dead of Winter is a game where it's sort of a Walking Dead as a board game. You have zombies, but zombies are uh, sort of side dish to that. Uh, immersive gameplay as well. You have uh, a colony, you want to survive, but each one of you has personal goals and it's great because you um, you want to win all together, but each one of you has its own personal objective as well, that if you don't complete, you will not win the game. You know, even if uh, if you win like uh, the, the first, the main objective. And there can be a traitor, uh, amongst you as well, he has his own objective, uh, moral to zero and so on. There are crises, uh, you go into different locations, search for different cards, there's a lot of that uh, cool uh, cards and weapons and so on that you can use. I really like these aspects and that you control not just one character, but you control mm -hmm. a, like so I, I would even uh, describe it as a mindset this sort of psychological mindset of, of the characters that you control, that you have sort of obsessions that uh, also correspond to your um, objectives, mm -hmm. objective cards. And of course, uh, crossroad cards are really cool as well. And I like, some people don't like that they occur uh, rarely sometimes in some games and more often in some other games. I really like that they do like that and uh, that sometimes they uh, occur rarely because that way it becomes unique it becomes something really cool when it comes up you know it's a surprise finally we got something really cool you know uh, so that i like it and the crossroads cards give you this uh, big stories really thematical moments uh really tense moments of of and so it trips uh, off of that theme you really feel like you are in the colony, you're surviving, you have sort of a obsession, for example, you want to gather the food because you want to eat every day, I don't know, whatever, you know. There's a lot of theme in that. And zombies feel like zombies there, although they are on the side. So that's Dead of Winter. It's really <laughs> cool game as a whole as well. Uh, I know there is something broken in me, but I don't like the game and I don't find the game thematic. I don't find crossroad uh, cards cool. It just doesn't give me the feel at all. It's just going around the board, just doing some random stuff. I, think I don't know why. It's like everything sounds thematical, but it just, just not 
bring out the theme for me. I think maybe because you don't like the uh, game mechanically. I don't know. Uh, that way, uh, for example, if you, if you don't like the game mechanically, you cannot go into that game and then you will not feel the theme that much There's as like well. There's like nothing wrong with mechanics. So yeah. It doesn't make sense. Like, it, I should love it. I, I don't understand why I don't like it. Because it's pure mini thrash and you're a Euro gamer? Um, yeah, but still. Okay. Yeah. My number three is Robinson Crusoe. Okay. It is a um, hybrid with the Euro, or it's even actually more Euro uh, game. But I really like the game that each round you feel like, okay, this is the morning, you gather together in the camp and then you just divide the task for, for the day. You decide who does what, wh who goes where and all that. I really like that where the moral track goes down in the game, you actually really feel it. You're depressed, you're frustrated with the game, you're, you really are demotivated. In, in the game, not with the game, I think. Yeah, well, kind of both. Okay. Because if you're sure. demotivated in the game, then you're kind of demotivated like for the game, for the like, gameplay, for this one game, game session. Then you shouldn't like that game. No, I like it because it's really thematical. That's okay. the thing. You're trying to survive and it is not easy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. of course, those all of kind of those encounter cards, where you go somewhere, you do something, you get wound, and then you shuffle it, and something might happen with the wound, or you will find a creature that you didn't notice who's that, and then you shuffle, and it that creature might come out later, but might not. It mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very thematical game. Uh, uh, it didn't end up on my list because it was really hard to make the. It, it was really hard for That's me to right. make the list. It was really hard. It, you will you will see the choices that I have, and then you will realize that it was like really hard. I think uh, that the winter replaced the Robinson Crusoe for me. I think Robinson Crusoe would be number four or something like that. Um, yeah, the game is really thematical. You feel. Although the rules are really complex and yes, the gameplay is really complex, complex. you need always when you come back to it after a few months, you need to um, come back to the rules as well. There's a lot of rules and they're not written that well. But um, the game, yeah, the gameplay itself is smo smooth, I think, or yes. everything makes sense. Yes. So the, like That's really exploring really and building and you need a pot to make like po what, not potions, mm -hmm. but whatever you need to make to make food, and you need mm -hmm. shovel to do whatever. That really gives to, or... to this game, and I would say it's quite a big rule for maybe designers. If you want to make a complex game, if you want to make tons of rules, make everything thematical, make everything intuitive. So in Robinson Crusoe. As I already mentioned, everything makes sense. Everything mm -hmm. is logical and like mm -hmm. the connection with them is really logical. Yeah. That really helps a lot. Th that's for me that the same. That game explains itself. Yeah, that's the same for me as with, as with the, the Winter. The, the Winter doesn't have easy rules. Mm -hmm. It has more complex rules as well, but everything makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you cannot make the rules 100% thematical, you know? Yeah. It's it's impossible. So don't bother yourself with making it, or or as players, don't search a hundred percent thematical aspect in the game, hundred percent theme in that game. Some things should be mechanical, otherwise the, the <clears throat> otherwise the game will fall apart. Mm -hmm, might be, might happen. Yeah. So let's go to our number two. Yep. Yeah. My number two is a game where the storyline and the story is really important. And you might know the game, so might know you know the game. It's Mice and Mystics. Um, Mice and Mystics, as a story, as a great theme, it's like uh, it's really hard to compare it to something. It has a lot going on. The mechanics are really simple. You just roll dice, you go around, you like do search action, you do scurry, whatever you know, you fight. That's like an RPG. But in this RPG, they uh, made a game with a really great story that you follow while you play this campaign. You feel like these mice inside the game. You feel like these characters. Uh, 
and that's what comes uh, like that's where I feel the theme the most it's like I feel like I am there in the castle I agree yeah and my statistics is a great game uh, there's a lot of rules as well and it's RPG but it's really easy RPG with uh, one of the greatest stories I've ever had or seen in a board game. I agree. There's lots of people who uh, criticize mechanics in the game, but this game is really all about the story. Mm -hmm. If you want to <clears throat> enjoy the game, don't pay attention that the mechanics are, let's say, repetitive. Like, you do kind of same stuff. Mm -hmm. Think about, like, thematical of what you're doing in the game, like what is changing in each tile or each chamber, then this game will just come alive. Yeah, if, if people play like a just a simple board game like, oh, I uh, go and roll some dice and mm -hmm. kill some rats and then I search and then go into other chamber and do the same, yeah, then you won't, won't feel the game, then you won't feel why this game is considered to be a yes. really good game. Even it has really good ratings. Anyway, it, it's, it's considered a really good game. It is, because so, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, your number two? My number two is a game that came out uh, last year. Uh, this is the game that it will be quite hard to tell anything not to spoil. And this is Time Stories. Mm. I will, I most probably will be talking quite slowly because I really don't want to spoil anything. Yes. <laughs> so uh, each scenario gives you different theme, a different story, different mystery that you have to solve. And these are really different. Uh, they give you the feel quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am sorry. I really don't know how to tell about the game without spoiling. But that's an amazing game, and mm -hmm. if you have heard people telling that this is one of the amazing experiences, then yes, this game is amazing experience, wrapped in a board game for form. So this is something yeah. truly amazing. If you know those um, exit rooms or escape rooms, where you're locked into one room and you have to find a way to escape. So this is kind of same-ish, so it gives that emotion, it gives that feeling, but it is wrapped in a really thematical board game. It's like, yeah, it's escape room, cinematic escape room, let's say. Yeah, but so, much better sort of actually, a... much, much, much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But let's go to our number ones. My number one uh, is a game that you will never guess what it is. I will totally. never guess. I'm kidding. It's time stories. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, um, it's really hard to sp uh, to not spoil the game, but I will just add that um, yeah, you have different themes, and each theme feels unique, uh, and the mechanics are rather simple. It's an, sort of an RPG style game with sort of a yeah, not sort of, but it's with immersive story. Mm -hmm. It's very cinematic. That's the thing. It gives me the feel of a book or a film um, it just feels like I go through the story and I don't really when, when we play the game and there are like there are mechanical things like rolling dice and so on I don't feel like I'm doing that you know mm -hmm. I, I don't feel like I'm just rolling dice you know I'm, I'm, I feel like I go through the story I'm I never had a feeling that I'm rolling like I'm dice. fighting or I'm uh, doing something else you know yeah <laughs> It's just, it just so full of theme and story that um, even the puzzles inside the game uh, don't, they're, they're not abstract, they're really thematical, every puzzle. Normally in board games, puzzles are abstract. Sorry, they are. Something that doesn't make really sense, usually. Yeah. Like thematical sense, I mean. But there, it's, it's like a film. It's a film that I would see um, only one time but I would get such a big feeling of that that um, I, would, I would be fine for another 10 years, you know, with just watching this film one time. Or maybe in 10 years I will forget everything and watch it again, you know. But yeah. Uh, I don't think I would forget anything there. 
Depends, yeah, yeah. It depends on the people, but maybe we will forget and play it in a few years again. Maybe with another group where we know some answers and we let them decide. That would be cool. So, but anyway, that's that's Time Stories. It's the most thematical game uh, of all time for me. Like, really, uh, most magical game of 2015 by far. Although I haven't played Pandemic Legacy, but whatever, I don't care about Pandemic Legacy. Not at all. You didn't hear that! <laughs> okay, so actually the most thematical game ever made is Pandemic My Mystic. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is My Mystics. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone who have uh, watched us, who know our, uh, our tastes and everything. So everything that Ilya said, I will just try to add something else. So, in the story, the first of all, that we noticed really in the game, you feel like a character. We first of all noticed that, but we didn't tell, like, Ilya, it's your turn. We told, like, Maginos, your turn, or this, you walk, or you do something. So, mm. when game makes you change the name to the name of the character, it means quite a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. And this is the game that gives you most story moments to, to share. For example, I will actually share my favorite story moment. There was a tile where you could go out of the tile only with Ness because he's really strong. He had to, I think, make a hole in the wall. But there was a, quite a big step, so he had to jump on there. But as he's really slow, he couldn't do that. So all the mice were already there waiting for Ness while Ness is just trying, you know, jumping there and failing all the time. Mm -hmm. So the mice actually went down, put him on the spoon, sent him with the spoon catapulted. up. Yeah, catapulted up there, picked up spoon and went there. So it's so cute and thematical. Mm -hmm. And I like the great bombs and all that. It's it is amazing. You actually feel that you are creating the story. Mm -hmm. Although you have chapters. You have like pre-written chapters that you know you have to, in order to go on with the next chapter, you have to finish the first one, like success. But no, you, still, you don't really have to. You can play chapters separately, but it, it doesn't make sense it's, yeah, if because, you want to have the story. Yes, exactly. That's, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. that, and you actually feel that you are writing the story. Uh, and you have the same feeling, like if you're failing mm -hmm. and then you're failing. So that's amazing story. I really love that gives a bit of the like the good child inside me makes happy because come on, you're cute mice who are running around and you know saving the world. Oh yes, it is. And we we have the first set and first expansion uh, painted, mm -hmm. so it, it gives her even more theme. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the magical aspects, even these little magical aspects that, like, for example, Colin, you go fight cockroaches while I, Tilda, uh, will go and find the swords in the sewers, you know, yeah. so something like that, and lots of emotions, <laughs> lots of emotional, lots of emotional moments where you defeat or where you lose or whatever, yeah where all mice are captured and then there is one weak lily with the last life uh, like left and then there is cat brody when you feel it oh, there is no point continuing but then actually lily defeats and it's oh the emotions defeats them if you have never tried definitely yeah. try it out at least give it a try so yeah um as you can see our choices were... Emotions are up. <laughs> yeah, emotions are up and our choices were... I, I was thinking about, yeah, I, I probably knew that it would be your number one and Time Stories would be in your top three. And that Robinson Crusoe was basically changed for me to Dead of Winter. Mm -hmm. and But it's all the same for us. Yes, yeah, so all both choices were quite course, obvious. We, we played together if you haven't noticed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but let's go to our friend's picks. Absolutely. Yeah? First is Kyle, and his pick is Twilight Struggle. He says, this game takes you into history and makes you feel each agonizing choice. The game is a game of inches, not major victories. Each round recreates a historical crisis and the game feels tense and immersive from the start. Love it or hate it, 
it is hard to find a game more thematic. Yeah. I didn't know where the game is thematic actually. Uh, yeah, I just I thought knew it's it. like really, really Cold War. It's, it's I very strategic. But I didn't. Well, I knew the theme. Yeah, it, but it, 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 so I didn't know it's like. It's probably very thematic because it's not so. I think it is not so hard to make a political game thematic. You know, it's not so hard. What, it what, actually sounds hard to me. No, depends. Yeah, I, I think uh, making a another cool. Th I know, whatever. But Twilight Struggle. I might not agree. Yeah, Twi Twilight Struggle is uh, the game that we will probably not play anytime soon. Yeah, I don't know. It's mm. it's two player. It's Cold War. Uh, it looks horrible. Uh, the art, I mean. Uh, sorry for me. So it doesn't. For me, call only me. this last last thing doesn't invite. But art. Yes, but the theme, Cold War, uh, two-player, really high ranks, uh, strategical, yes, it invites to try. I've been thinking about that quite a long time. I don't care about politics at all. That and the theme can of that. be interesting in theme. Hmm? Maybe. But let's go to uh, next one. It's Margaret or Megibot. And her choice is Koi Pond. And she says, Koi Pond is a little hidden gem from Daniel Solis. Players build a communal pool, a personal pond, and a house with a beautiful, beautiful koi fish cards, and sometimes there are other animal friends. Each space in the game is connected to the next. Players will try to predict what opponents would like to score to maximize their own points. Actions from one round affect the next. Just lovely. Uh, we uh, actually, uh, dis you discovered the other game that bothers you very much, I mean, in a good yeah. way, uh, from Daniel Solis, it's Kodama. Uh, I feel that that might actually, like, invite quite a lot, because yeah. it truly looks amazingly beautiful, but... What do you talk about? Koi Pond. Koi Pond. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. It <laughs> looks amazingly beautiful, it looks different, it looks... I haven't seen that. It has the like the pure Japanese art, or let's say Asian art. I'm not mm. sp like specialized in that. Mm -hmm. The art has always invited me, but I have never thought much about that. But if Megabot puts it like the best thematic game, that makes me think quite a lot. Mm, that we should try this game. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's it sounds really it beautiful. sounds like a cute theme. So I haven't seen that. I haven't looked into it. I, I don't know why. Just maybe I skip that. There's a lot of games. But yes, that's should. exactly. That's the game that I skip as well because I Ilya is more into small card games. I usually don't like them. That's the reason I didn't really look at Koi Pond. But I know the game because it's just so very beautiful. Yeah, but let's go to uh, next one. Uh, it's Jeff, and his pick is Robinson Crusoe: Adventures on the Cursed Island. And he says, when I want to be brutalized alone or with a select team of island-stranded conspirators, I play this game because it immerses you in its theme. One day I would really like to survive and get off the bloody island. A game I have never won, but come back far more again and again. This is very rare. We have won the game. I don't know why people like tell the game is so hard to win. No, the we first scenario is uh, isn't uh, well, like hard we, to win. I no. think we win almost each scenario after a few tries. We haven't tried uh, like those that we tried. Of course, we haven't tried all of them. Like far mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. We most we won almost every scenario so far. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we talked about Robson the Crusoe. Try. We talked talk, talked about Robson Crusoe already. So. Let's go to uh, the next pick. No, no I will what? actually add. Uh -huh. Only really thematical game will make you enjoy losing the game. Mm -hmm. Like will make you enjoy dying on uh, like island. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go to the next one. Suzanne uh, picked Above and Below. Above and Below is about discovering a series of underground caverns while you try to build up your village. The way you explore the caverns and expand as you go really uh, as you go really fits the theme. 
and the challenges you face that come in the adventure book are incredibly thematic and narrative. I feel like I'm on an adventure and I find I'll even make suboptimal choices just because it fits where I feel like the story of the game is going. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's thematic. Yeah, we have the game, we like the game. We love um, it. Yeah. I, yeah, loves we'll, it as well. I like it quite a lot. I cannot say love it. Uh, it's not in my top 10. Either way, uh, the storybook <laughs> in the game. Um, what I felt uh, when first we played the first couple of times, I felt that the stories are kind of samey and I thought that will be a problem. But there is the thing that, first of all, the choices that you make there are kind of like predictable in a good way. That means that they make sense. It's not like, mm -hmm. um, like the what was it, Arabian Nights that it's yeah, like, Arabian Nights, yeah. Like Horrible almost game. random, like like whatever you choose, ah, it doesn't game, make sense. Like oh, whatever will be there. But here you can actually think if you want to, like for example, get more resources. You can you can think like which one should it be, but which is good in the game already that it surprises you so many times that it does not become samey. Mm -hmm. Like the decision sometimes. I, I, I don't think there is such a big deal with spoiling, so I will spoil just one story there. Don't do I that. I thought I will release one character because I thought I will do good, but I actually kind of released Demon, so it okay. tends to surprise, which is really good. Yeah. I like, I like trying to figure out, mm -hmm. and I'm failing in that, yeah. but it still yeah. makes sense. I That's con thematical. Yeah. I consider it above and below for a moment, but it's not as thematical as a um, few other games. Even it's, it might be in my top 10 thematical games, but there are many other games that are more thematical. Adventure Book m gives the theme, yes, but not too much. It's still a Euro and the mechanics are still very mechanical, you know, the game is still very mechanical, even though there's a lot of that theme, but I don't really feel like I'm exploring the caverns that much, you know, even if with the adventure book, I feel that a little, but I feel more like I'm trying to get uh, right cards and the most points. So uh, eventually when I was thinking about this game, I realized that it's not as thematical as I first thought, um, but it has the theme, of course, yeah. But just uh, just my opinion. So uh, I, I was actually considering this game to uh, top three, but okay. yeah, it's just other games are much more. I really like the game, but uh, it's not as thematical as uh, some people might uh, uh, tell. You know. You mean Suzanne? Oh, oh no, I don't, I don't know. Maybe the thing is that maybe Suzanne haven't hasn't played any other. Or maybe she has, but. Whatever, but it's her pick, and she can say that it's her most medical game. For her, maybe she found the theme in there uh, much more than. I definitely find do. more theme that you do. Yeah. Like for example, even that. Even uh, you mean like in every game? No, no, I mean exactly this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, people different. It's yep. for example in the winter, I found much more theme. You didn't. Find I, I didn't much. find almost any. Yeah, that's the thing. It, Strange, because it's strange. considered a medical I know, game. 100%. I know. I I really accept that I'm. I'm weird. Okay, but that. let's go to uh, next. Uh, our, our friends Clive. Um, has picked Rococo. I know how to pronounce it. Rococo. Rococo. I have to give this to Rococo. I played with a big bloke whose perfect next turn was stolen by the player ahead of him. This caused him to say very aggressively, put the dress back on the beep rack. <laughs> yeah, it turns you into a diva master dressmaker. Uh, yeah. Diva master dressmaker? Wow. I can't imagine guys telling that. Put the dress back! It's my dress! I, I think that should have been a hilarious moment. Yeah. We should try Rococo because of that. Maybe we'll get yeah. that out of someone. 
I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but uh, Rococo has a really um, boring cover. <laughs> And the theme of dressing and uh, doesn't clothes invite. doesn't invite. But maybe we'll play it someday, you know? I uh, wouldn't say no to that game, especially after Clive's uh, yeah. description. I, I, would, I would even play it. I don't know why. Maybe uh, right. Maybe for now, in, in 2016, I have been more um, open towards uh, weird themes okay. and weird yes. arts and so on. So. But let's go to next one, Zoe. Uh, Zoe picked up Descent and she uh, said first edition. There's a second edition that's really popular, but few people still play the first edition probably. So, and she says, uh, still playing the campaign after all these years, love the sense of developing your character through the, your journey. Um, don't really know much yeah, about, we, we haven't played. I have heard much about the game. I have read much about the game. It doesn't invite me because it's very trash and it's a cooperative campaign mode. You need to be there for many, many hours, and yeah, I just don't want to invest. We that don't much. have yes. Whenever we have like three except time stories, then <clears throat> yeah, we usually don't. We tend to play more like several smaller games than one big, except of the. Yeah, story. but uh, Andres uh, also one of uh, uh, Versus Reviews uh, guys. Team uh, members. Uh, yeah, um, he plays it. He loves it, and he has posted some pictures on Instagram. So maybe you can ask him. Um, but Andres is the next one, and he um, has picked Flashpoint, and not Descent. Maybe he didn't c come up with any, so he just threw in. And he says, Flashpoint, perhaps. Don't really bother with the theme, to be honest, for the most fun comes from playing the game. That are his words. So, um, yeah, and Andres is the one who doesn't bother himself with the theme that much. Usually he's like quite a Euro gamer and like heavy Euro gamers, which, which are quite... Yeah often themeless or he, he likes mechanics like he, wa he wants to get yeah. uh, cool mechanics rather than theme it doesn't really but i've heard good about flashpoint actually yeah it might uh, be very mm -hmm. thematical yeah but it's I, I still a that. cooperative game so we don't need another one i don't know if we'll ever try i don't think we'll ever try that <laughs> but the last one is baker um and he Shout it, Mansions of Madness, or Mansion of Madness, probably, yeah. should be written. And he says, I'm the first to admit this game is not without its flaws. However, for sheer storytelling power, it's hard to find a better board game. This game has one player taking the role of the keeper who controls all the bad guys and runs the story, while the rest of the players take on the role of uh, uh, 20th uh, investigators. You must search for clues in order to discover the true objective of the Keeper so that you can then thwart his plans. While doing so, you must also be dealing with locked doors, traps and obstacles. Oh, and don't forget the monsters. So many cool monsters. He's obsessed with the game. This game is sadly no longer being supported by Fantasy Flight games, but if you ever have the chance to play it, do it. No, I'm, uh, I was... There was a small joke about uh, he's obsessed with the game, but uh, it's I think he's obsessed with the game in a good way. Uh, I wanted to try Mansion of Madness. It's the same. It just takes so long that I don't want to invest my time into it. But it's uh, sort of a Cthulhu Lovecraft mm -hmm. that that's that sort of a theme that I'm fine with. Although I, I'm not really keen on the, you know, I, there are so many Cthulhu games coming uh, every week, every day, yes, I don't know. Yes, but the thing is with Cthulhu games that you have like a pointless space on Cthulhu theme and the actual Cthulhu theme that you feel. So the old Fantasy Flight games that made, like old Fantasy Flight games that made the Cthulhu theme, like um, Arkham Horror, Mansion of Madness, these are the ones 
that are it's, good. Yeah, it's probably a very thematical game. I tell more, of course, about the Arkham Horror because we played that. But um, we are those who I read most of the stories from Lovecraft. So I can feel the, like, the real feeling. So I know which game gives the feel right Feel the real feeling? feeling? Yes. <laughs> yes, you yeah. can do that. Feel the feeling. Be with us. So yeah, so there are games that actually give the correct, the right Cthulhu feeling and those that are just, you know, tentacles. Yeah, probably Mansion of Madness is, is one of the big thematical, long, but probably, I don't know, it, it sounds to me as a betrayal on the house, the of, of the house on the hill or whatever. Betrayal, everybody knows this betrayal game. Betrayal something hill. House hill, betrayal. <laughs> Eventually, uh, I think uh, Mansion of Madness is a better game, probably, mm -hmm. based on what I heard. It, it's, it, like, it seems to me that it's a betrayal done right, but I haven't played Mansion of Madness. I have, I have played Betrayal, I haven't played Mansion of Madness, so my opinion is uh, not so important yeah, we, right now here, so I'm just speculating but it just sounds like that yeah. traps locked sounds doors good. obstacles you go into the house there is a master in betrayal there is a master that that first of all you all uh, do stuff co cooperatively and then you reveal the traitor and you, you, you reveal the master of evil uh, here somebody is the keeper from the start so yeah. maybe they're really similar I don't maybe at one point I'll try mention that this because uh, I, I, I really wanted to try it, but maybe in, in the camp somewhere, in the summer camp, for example, that we are, that is coming up, Estonian summer camp. I don't think you're gonna spend more, half of the day there. In we'll see, day. we'll see, we'll see. I, I you maybe. Play with me six games uh, instead. Then you should play Dead of Winter with me. Long nights. No problem. Long and nights. I will, actually play it. I will have it soon. I will have it in summer. Because I'm going to give the game second and third and fourth chance because I don't understand why I don't like it. It doesn't make sense to me. Long night makes it hard. But thank you guys for uh, watching our top three. Probably is much longer than yeah, sorry, we... I was kind of babbling. Yeah, we were, we were both kind of babbling. But I think it's um, because of, uh, of the th theme of that <laughs> top three. <laughs> yeah. No, the th thematical games are games that you want to talk about much because you yeah. just, once you express your emotions, you want to express how you feel about this theme. Theme. <laughs> feel, theme, feeling, emotions. <laughs> Lots of keywords. It's thematical theme and very... Our English is like, yeah, it's, it's good. Okay. Yeah, so but... We're wrapping it up and let's hope our next top three will be a bit shorter, but as good. I think it might be shorter because we have top three. I think it will be shorter. With top three games with best artwork. So it will, that will be our next top three. That's a good one. I'm really looking forward already. That's a beautiful one, probably. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, to share our channel. We would be very thankful for that. And also, um, please share your comments and um, chess is a thematical game so yep. i'm throwing in some more <laughs> provoking <laughs> to make people comment more we want more comments we want more of your op discussions. opinions really discussions just argue with us please okay yeah. so we are now actually wrapping up yeah uh, thank you for being here with us and see yeah, you next that, time. That was Alina, by the way, and I'm Ilya. So, bye-bye. Ciao.